For centuries, poets, writers, and authors have had an obsession with nightfall, those uneasy, queasy hours where fables and legends lead us to believe that after midnight, our deepest fears play out on a dark stage. Down in Nixon, Texas, there's only about one place open in the wee hours, and for that matter, only about one person still awake. I guess I really don't need a whole lot of sleep. I have had people ask me, don't you get scared in here at night? Well, no, not yet. So far, I have never been scared. For more years than she can remember, Marjorie Burnett has worked what you might call the graveyard shift down at the Tiger Toad. Oh, sure, she admits, the nights are long. But for Marjorie, the graveyard shift isn't over with sunrise. I can't wait for the sun to come up because I always know there's someplace else I can go with my dowsing rods. Now, over the years, we've found folks who can scout for underground water with dousing rods. Marjorie's known for years that she's got the unexplained but highly reliable talent for dousing in weed-choked cow pastures. But it ain't water she's after. What I can't imagine is that all through all these years, and through several landowners, why didn't somebody notice that cemetery, Lily? All she had to go on was a single lily nearly swallowed by the weeds and the crumbled, broken, and almost buried marker of a forgotten grave. You see, Marjorie is a dowser of the dearly departed. I don't do anything to them. I just have them just resting in my hands and they react. I don't know why. The man who owns this ranch had not even closed the deal yet when he was out here working and he found part of a broken headstone. And when I came out here, I found 10 more graves. Nash Perry, born December 11, 1872, died July 11, I think it's 1901. Well, I came out here and I went back from that big tree back across this way and back several feet and the rods didn't react at all. I got on this side of the tree a few steps and they just went crazy. And ultimately, we found, I found a row of graves across here and uh, we dug around and found bricks that had lined the graves. And then I came down a little farther and I found another perfect row they're buried just in a perfect straight line. There's no telling how many forgotten graves and entire cemeteries Marjorie's found with two bent pieces of wire. But time after time and backed up with tons of research, She's found hundreds of burials in back pastures and backyards across Texas. And if there's enough hours left in the day, the lady who needs very little sleep makes sure that no grave goes unmarked, as long as she can mix mortar. Family members don't know where they're buried or could be they have no descendants left. This one, for example, as far as I know, never married and never had, had no descendants. I feel good about making one for him. He was born about 1808 and then died um, August the, the 30th, 1853. So he's been a long time without a marker. Now, it's hard enough to explain Marjorie's strange talent for locating the long forgotten. Even harder to explain when you take into account that she can tell male from female buried six feet under. In fact, the folks over in Pilgrim are mighty proud of Marjorie for finding dozens of unmarked graves and without asking for pay or even a pat on the back, 
she makes the markers one after another, just like she's done in so many cemeteries. It is sad that, that people will live a whole life and then they'll just end up as an unknown person. So when I come out to put flowers at the cemetery, I buy small, cheap bunches because I put out about 20 on graves that other people don't. Well, they just don't have any people to buy, them, buy flowers for them. Somebody ought to remember these people. And if all I can do is put male, female, child, whatever, if that's all I can do, then that's what I will do. And if it's possible to find family members that can have a, a granite tombstone put in, that's just wonderful. I'm probably the only person you see that gets happy in a cemetery. Finally, after 151 years, Captain Noah Newton will have a marker on his grave. Nope, she doesn't need a lot of sleep, not when you're guided by some unexplainable force through the forests and fields where Marjorie Burnett finds forgotten lives. The heat and the hazards of the wilderness all go with the territory when you live your life on the graveyard shift. I feel it's very important to mark every grave that's found, and I know that it's important to find every grave that exists, but as long as I can do it, I plan to keep on. As long as the sun keeps coming up every day.